right now. Got it. All right, uh, Xavier, you know me, I'm, but officially I'm Chartel Hawkins, a member of the um, Criminal Justice Committee, as well as the Political Action Committee with Ms. Nadine. I also attend the Legal Redress Committee meetings um, that Tawana leads. Um, so yeah, very active in the NAACP DeKalb. I'm glad you are here. Um, so I'm happy that Xavier was able to speak with us. We, um, Criminal Justice Committee, he is a former I'm not sure of the correct terms. I'm not sure if it's students or what you would say, Xavier, of the Youth Detention Center. Um, Xavier has a history of involvement with gangs, is from Georgia, um, and has, after graduating, has gone on to do great things. So I am very happy that we are here and get to hear his um, story and hear, hopefully, some ideas and suggestions on what we can do to help our kids avoid this interaction with the law. So without further ado, Mr. Jennings. Thank you so much, Chartel. You're awesome. Thank you everybody for having me. So ironically, um, I'm actually from the cab. I grew up in the cab. I am from Lithonia. My mother even went to Lithonia High School, the original Lithonia High School over there close to Brew Street. Um, but more importantly, we're here today to talk about criminal justice reform and importance of one, our youth, and then the allocation of different resources for our youth. Um, <clears throat> essentially, what you see is a prison doorway, and it's literally just taking our kids from YDC to DOC. And we are the, the limelight into regards to how we can stop it. When I was 16 years old, I literally was trying to do everything under the sun. I was, <clears throat> I sold drugs. I was involved in gangs. I was a product of my environment because I thought that was cool. I wanted to fit in. Um, <clears throat> I did three years in a YDC, Eastman YDC in uh, middle Georgia, where I was able to still continue to finish high school. I was able to take the SAT. I ended up going to a uh, technical college to make sure college was even for me. Then I transferred to University of West Georgia. Um, I'm finishing my degree in political science where, you know, essentially one day I probably will run for city council, hopefully back into cab. Um, and I went on to get my master's in public administration from Purdue online um, and essentially it's all for the youth. It's setting a tone. And what also made this uh, imprint on history was I was one of the first youth in the state of Georgia to be released on Governor Deal's early release law. So not only did I, I leave an imprint for youth after me on the good behavior law, um, I left an imprint to know that we can accomplish anything in this world we want to put our minds to. If we just have a little push, a little help, and the allocation of resources, right? So pretty much, um, I first wanna talk about mastering the plan, mastering ourselves, and mastering the craft. It will not take long. I don't wanna take everybody's night up, but um, essentially when I was in YDC, I had to come up with a plan. Um, you get tired of seeing your mother hurt, you see that, you know, you, you don't have proper bed sheets. It's extremely cold conditions. You know, you're fighting somebody who's from the other side of Georgia. It was a really big war inside our YDCs where Atlanta was always versus everybody else. So essentially I was fighting other brothers from Savannah because I was from Atlanta. Um, I fought people from Augusta. I fought people from Columbus. I had simply defending myself, not that I even wanted to fight. But as I was in the YDC, I continued to read books um, and learning our history and essentially unlearning the toxic behaviors that I had to become the young man I am today, an advocate. <clears throat> so essentially criminal justice reform is mastering a plan. It would, it's going to take this entire village to come up with the plan because without the village, many things will fall apart because 
if we don't master ourselves, we it's, it's not going to work out properly. So when we say master the plan, master ourselves, and master our craft, our craft is mentoring. I think that's one of the most important resources to any of you in keeping them from the prison pipeline. Um, I had a mentor who was a JCO at the YDC. He told he helped me with everything I had to do for college. He used his own money to, to mail off all my applications. He funded me to take the SAT um, inside the YDC. So when I say master your craft, the craft is mentor and it takes the resources of our community and, the, and somebody just having a caring heart and learning how to sympathize and empathize with other people that everybody makes mistakes. And as soon as we learn that as a community, things will change and get a lot better. Um, so yes. So if anybody has any questions, would like me to go more in depth in my story, I would love to share, just let me know. I just didn't wanna take up too much time. It's, it's not a problem uh, with that. What was this? Um, oh, okay. Nadine had something that she was placing in. Uh, so uh, those, if you do not want to speak, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Um, but uh, Xavier, mm -hmm. we commend you for what you have done. And like you say, you're mastering the plan. Developing a plan is always very, very, very important. And then after you get a plan, you have to make sure that you're prepared for the plan that you have. Yes, and sir. so that's what you do. You get in there, you prepare yourself. You did by getting the education, getting your GED, then getting your uh, SAT scores up, getting your uh, undergrad, and then going over to Duke and getting your master's. I just think it's a wonderful thing that you have that and you can still bring that same thing back to the same community where you were once disruptive. Now you're doing something to create a better life for everybody coming behind you. And I tell this out to my community in the church all the time is that the big piece is you have to live so those coming behind you can see something very well. And we see that in you, so we thank you for it. Um, uh, it says, I love it well, with what you were sharing. Okay, uh, I was just listening to, looking at some of the stuff that's online. I wanted to ask if anyone has any questions for Mr. Xavier. If not, we'd like for you to go into a little bit of depth of what you've done with mastering the plan yourself and also your craft to get to the point where you are now. So just before you do, are there any questions for, for Mr. Xavier now? Yes, this is Nadine. I'm sorry I had my hand up. Oh, okay. Just wanted to quick ask him, the, the letters, what you had stated, what does that mean? The, the Q, the T something, what you had stated. You know how the acronyms and... Um, YDC? Not YDC. YDC, the other one that who's the person was um oh, J was a, oh. tdo or something like that oh, yeah jco is a juvenile corrections uh, officer okay that's yeah. what it's asked for yeah cool. um, <laughs> yeah so he was he played a very pivotal part in um my success of what i have today um, no problem i was just wanting to know what it actually meant the yeah, J, the J, what? The J, juvenile? Juvenile correction officer. Officer, okay. JCO. All right. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. I have questions, but I think they can wait till the end. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thank you so much, Ms. Nadine and Ms. Chartel. Um, so, Xavier, if you would, go ahead and expound a little bit on uh, what we've asked, and then if there are other questions... Uh, we'll feel free at that time. So, absolutely. Um, so, of course, the changing, I think a lot of people have an unrealistic expectation for our youth once they get out. 
and it was still me unlearning things and learning how to become a man and um, changing the environment around me. Um, I seem to, I still had to go back to Lothonia. You know, when I got out, I still had to go back to that particular environment. A lot of people, of course, moved on with them lot with their lives, but <clears throat> there was still gang activity and things what could have brought me back into it. But instead, I got active. I didn't even, I was so insecure about my story, I didn't even start public speaking until about four, five years after, because I was trying to accomplish what a lot hasn't. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to graduate college. You know, just getting into college wasn't enough. Um, and now, you know, my wife supports me getting my PhD if that's the route I want to go. Um, but pretty much we, the, the plan just all comes down to our resources and the people that helps with the resources. You know, a lot of people are doing it for, you know, instant gratification and, and unfortunately, that's the, that's the society we live in. But, you know, like I always say that as soon as the, the quicker we learn to empathize and sympathize with other people, things tend to get better. And I think having more mentors and community mentoring and community activities for you will bust the prison pipeline wide open. Um, I had a youth, I'm not sure if you all heard of it. Um, I was speaking to a youth who was in Millersville, YDC. He got out in um, December and he kidnapped the lady and put it in the trunk just here recently. It was all in the news um, off Glenwood. Um, and that youth had his GED. He didn't have bad grades. He was very vocal. He was a leader. He wanted to change. He was in the Credible Messages program. He wanted to be a mentor, but he went back to the same environment and they did not give him any type of mentorships. He didn't have any type of resources when he got out with everything he already accomplished within YDC. So what could we have done differently? With me at the time working at DJJ, I couldn't get any personal information about the youth. It was a liability. Um, but what could we have done different? What could he, the youth have done different? Could he had been, you know, unlearned more behaviors or did he need that resource of mentoring to help him continue to unlearn those behaviors? Um, the path is hard, it's hard. And Eastman YDC was the worst YDC in the state of Georgia. Um, and you can still Google it to this day about some of the lawsuits some of the people who were injured. Um, and it was a reality check. It was either, for me, it was either going to be in prison or dead, or okay, we need to change. Um, and I wanted to change. You know, I had significant amount of books around me. I, you know, when family came, I'm asking them to constantly bring books of about different influencers, you know, Malcolm X, autobiography of Malcolm X, I had the Soul of the Black Folk, the W.E.D.B., Du Bois, and, and just different influencers that I was like, okay, these people made mistakes in their lives too. And they was able to change it around. Um, so, you know, around, after I graduated uh, undergrad, you know, I did a few internships here and there um, just to get, you know, learn the political process and things like that. I, I actually, ironically, uh, internship under Governor Deal, who passed the, you know, the, the good behavior law, and he still doesn't know to this day, you know, he saved my life. You know, like, hey, without you, I, I probably would have been charged as an adult. You know, I was, I was 12 days away from being charged from an adult. Um, because my 17th birthday was coming, which I think that law needs to be changed. Um, and, you know, and that's where it comes to mastering your craft and mastering yourself, because without his influence, I would have never been impacted. I wouldn't be sitting here right now. So 
um, I think that plays a very, very pivotal part. And I think I challenge everybody to mentor as many youth as possible, public speak, even if you don't have a story like mine, that doesn't stop you from public speaking and impacting somebody. Um, you know, you don't have to be a pastor to do it. Pastor, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not throwing shade at you, brother. But yeah, but you don't have to be a pastor to do it. It's, um, and you don't have to be perfect to do it. You know, um, life is hard, mentoring is hard, you know, because everybody thinks different and you got to take different steps, um, you know. And that's what recidivism is all about. So yes, yes, sir. I hope I hit all the points. Well, you did. Um, Nadine says, great to see you did not want to stay where you were. And thank you for following your path, the way that you're going. It makes great sense that you've surrounded yourself with some great people. A lot of people say positive people, but sometimes even positive people that doesn't mean they're heading toward the same path you're going in. Right. Although they're doing well and could say, hey, you're doing well, but you need some people that can get you to your next level. So that's some great people that are there. And what they did is they looked in you and they saw greatness and decided that greatness is what other people need to be able to see. And honestly, because if I see you walking down the street, I would feel great because of you, um, not necessarily knowing where you came from, but where you are today and the, and the type of person that you are will make a person feel welcome to have you walk down the street and they're walking past you. There's no uh, fret of anything going on and they're just going to see greatness coming out of you. So I appreciate that. Uh, she also did say, do you have a mentoring going on? Uh, do they get mental health sessions while they're in juvenile um so to add, i see some of the questions in the chat um okay so they do have mental health um resources inside of ydc when i was in ydc they didn't have mental health resources so you know i kept i kind of just was in a mode of just keep my head down read read keep my head down educate myself unlearn things and it was just, it takes a toll on you. And it took a toll on me. I didn't really get the resources until I got out of YDC. Mm -hmm. But now, um, currently, the youth have a lot more resources in there where they are assigned a mental health counselor who listens to their problems, diagnoses anything, and gives them the proper medicines or uh, therapy sessions that they need to be successful. Um, but again, it goes back to mastering yourself. You know, what are you doing with the resources? You know, are you just going through the motions or are you actually taking the time out to make sure you conquer the resources needed to be successful when you get out? Um, and for the other question, um, I wish I could do some legislative advocacy for criminal justice reform. I would love that. Um, and I love speaking. I love public speaking. So anytime you ever need a, somebody to come and speak, whether it's a school group session, anything, I would love to come and speak. Um, I, I have, I, believe it or not, the gentleman I was speaking to in um, December, who got released in December, was a crypt leader. Um, it's a lot of gang violence inside the, the YDCs right now. And um, he was a crypt leader. And, I, you know, the first thing I told him was, you know, me and you can relate a lot more than you think. You know, I was like, I, I have a shirt and tie on right now. But, you know, when I was your age, when I was 16, 17 years old, I thought the same way you thought. And I was like, when you get out, you know, the world's not going to care. You know, and it's going to be up to you to come up with your own master plan. And um, from what I thought, it really, you know, sunk in, but yes. Okay, another question. Being in gangs before, do you try to mentor the gangs that you were a part of? Um, I have not, but 
I'm open to it. I, I will, you know, that's something I would love to do. I don't care what game you're in, to be completely honest with you. Um, I don't think there should even be games in Lithonian. You know, I feel like Lithonian is a, a pretty good area now and it has came a long way and, and is extremely beautiful. We have a great, beautiful green belt line. It's, it's came a very long way. And um, I would love to mentor people who's in the same game as me. Um, of course, I don't claim it now, but I, I would love to. Awesome, awesome. So um, Karen has asked, um, said, reading is so important to understanding other people mm -hmm. and their stories. It says, I'm glad you could have books. Uh, and she, she asked, how are youth in YDC helped if they need help with reading skills? Um, believe it or not, um, when I was in YDC, it was so bad. I was teaching, I had to teach myself. I, when I went into YDC, I was on like a fifth grade reading level, you know, like middle school. And I reading, I continue to read and my reading level just kind of just continued to improve. Um, honestly, they have teachers in class, of course, but the the reading is all on them um the, the they will have to advocate for that particular resource you know if, if the youth is struggle struggling reading um they have these meetings called ycrts where they can advocate for themselves like hey when i'm about to get out i'm about to get released i need help getting on a proper reader letter so i can get my GED in my high school you know when i go back to high school i don't want to read on a sixth grade level and um so that's one of the resources they have to advocate for themselves when i was there they had absolutely nothing there but i just took it on upon myself okay awesome there's the last question in the chat, and then we're going to go on to Chartel. It says, I was meaning to ask you if um, you are advocating to have the law change in reference to the one that talked about the age mm -hmm. of those going in from 16 uh, to whatever, if you're bringing it back or you're pu putting it up to 17 or 18 to make sure that they stay as youth to be able to get the help they need instead of going into uh, adulthood being, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, so I, I, I don't, so at the state capitol, you have to be registered as a lobbyist, and I'm not registered as a lobbyist. I work in legislative affairs, but I work for the state, and it's not, you don't have to register as a lobbyist, but when you want to advocate like that, where you're pushing a legislative um, position, you have to be um, registered as a lobbyist. I've spoken to the former DJJ commissioner, because this is not the first time this legislative, legislative piece has came up. I've spoke to the former DJJ commissioner and said, I would love to speak on behalf of this legislation. I was like, you know, I think my story will really impact the, the committee. Um, but sometimes committee members like to take a stance of tough on crime. And sometimes tough on crime is, it's, it's okay to a certain extent, but it doesn't come up with solutions to the problems in our communities. I think it's just hiring our arrest rate of our youth. And, and, and youth past 17 is get, giving youth who's seven, in that 17, 18, 19 corridor <clears throat> records they don't even need you know and when they're in actuality they just lack the resources so yeah if if i could if there was meetings or anything about it i would love to sit in i would love to advocate if that meant you know being able to help you get past but i think the law should change i don't think i think Anybody who's 17 is entirely too young to be charged as an adult for certain crimes, of course, you know. Um, but when it comes to like drug offenses, 
you know, I, I don't think a youth should be sent to prison for weed, especially when other states and certain cities are starting to deregulate, you know, and, and, and other laws applies too, of course, but yeah. Understood, Doc. Thank you so much for that. Um, listen, I did say Chartel's coming with a few questions. We're going to have her, and then we'll read Bert's question to get that answer. Come on, Chartel. All right. I have so many, so I've been trying to pick which one. I think, okay. um, <laughs> so I'm like, let's do it. I think it's, it would be prudent to mention, though, that I believe we are in a magical time right now. And I use the term magical because Georgia is nothing if not magic with what we've done um, politically over the last few years. And so where our power comes in is that community advocacy, right? So um, Xavier, I'll encourage you to call your city council people, your local officials. We're in the middle of primaries right now, like call and ask them their stances on this. Let them know your story. I know lots of um, community, communities when they are looking to pass certain legislature, they ask for the community's input. So you get to go in and you get to talk and provide comments and things like that. So that's a way for non-lobbyists to get their stories heard and get some traction and movement in. Um, I know with everything going on, I'm thinking about the rappers and the RICO case, what continues to happen in Buckhead um, and around Atlanta crime is is at the at the epicenter, I think, of everyone's kind of political agenda. And we have to use this momentum to really impact things like this. Um, so there's my my soapbox to get us all activated and out there and engaged in moving. My question for you, Xavier, and I prepped you for this, so I hope it doesn't come as a surprise that I was honest about what I would ask you. Um, thinking about all of the, the spotlight on the rappers and the RICO charge and all of these things. I wanna ask a question about gang affiliation, right? Like what can we do as committee members or community members, as members of the NAACP and this committee to help our children to help deter them from gang involvement. I, I recognize the sociological um, <clears throat> and things like that, family, community, I recognize all of that. But as someone that has that lived experience, um, what can we do to help our kids make different choices? That's a really good question, Shar. Um, so first, you know, I would start with like maybe a weekly mentoring program. Um, that that will probably be the first step because we're we're establishing a foundation of taking them out of that environment mm -hmm. we're taking them out away from the drugs we're taking them out away from the violence we're taking them away from the guns we're taking them away from them different things nobody says we have to spend money to impact the youth we can simply just walk the green belt we can simply all climb stone mountain we can simply you know have a barbecue, whatever it, it takes. But I think a weekly mentoring program is the start of the foundation of resources. How can we teach them how to tie ties? How can we teach young ladies how to do their hair or you know, the importance of how to do a resume? Um, how can we teach them, okay, what's the importance of education? Here is the different salary ranges when you have your high school diploma, you have your bachelor's degree and you have your master's degree. And, and, and just sit down and talk to them because a lot of you who get into these gangs don't know anything. You know, it's it's nowadays it's it's turning more from I'm just I'm joining to just be cool to like, okay, I really don't have no support system out here. I need quick money, I need mm -hmm. fast money. Um, so what can we do to get them off the streets? You know, Amazon hires youth. Slutty Vegans, one of their managers was a youth um, from DJJ, right? What well, That's what a lot of people don't know. Um, we have gotten youth at Walmart because right now it's the great resignation. And I think if anybody can take advantage of it, it's the youth. So I would start with a weekly mentoring program and breaking down and helping them master themselves so they become just like us, community advocates. Thanks, I got one more too before we go to break. This is um, to the asking about the actual facility. Um, 
okay. and center. Um, is that is that term comprehensive or is that like per facility? Like each one um, is something different. So like the term YDC. Mm-hmm. So So um, Department of Juvenile Justice, DJJ, has a certain amount of YDCs. Gotcha. YDCs okay. is youth detention centers. Right. And they have like adult has county jail and long-term facilities, prisons, DJJ has the same things. DJJ's RYDCs is regional youth detention centers. That's the short-term facilities where, you know, you're waiting court, you're only going to be in jail for maybe 30 to 60 days, et cetera. When you have a year or longer, you um, are sent to the YDC for long-term facilities. So thank you for that. So my question is, in being in the facility, is it rehabilitative? Like if someone did not have your drive and your motivation and your resilience, would they have the tools they needed to succeed when, once they left a youth detention center? Um, now at DJJ, they have an opportunity to succeed. Okay. Um, I, I, well, I give both instances. Back when I was in YDC, I don't think so. I think the recidivism rate was extremely higher now than back then because a lot of people didn't have the resources they needed. Um, there wasn't a good behavior law until 2020, 2012, 2013. Do you mean the recidivism was higher then than it is now? Like when you were there? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, so now they have a lot more resources. Um, you know, the, the, the wonderful lady of the slutty vegan is really close to DJJ. Anytime a youth in Jonesboro area and the other locations she has needs a job, she makes funding for that particular position just to keep that youth out of the streets. So back then when I was in YDC, um, it was extremely hard for anybody to succeed. It was more of a doggy dog. And you know, when I back then when I talked to a lot of people, it was, I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do when I get out. There was nobody helping me with a resume. There was nobody helping me learn how to type. There was nobody helping me how to maneuver, how to apply for jobs, how to apply for internships, how to apply to colleges and things like that. Um, and many, many people there just needed help and they never got that help. Mm -hmm. And um, to this day, I still hear about people I was at YDC with going back to prison or in prison. And um, they were one of some of the most talented people we'll probably ever meet. But the simple fact that they didn't have the allocated resources to succeed in the community showed. So, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Chartel. Bert has a question. He says, do you know uh, Ponchellis Jackson of Uplifting People? I do not. I am not familiar with that name um, Uplift or the organization Uplifting People. Well, I, I'll, I'll connect you after I have your email and you're on this thing now and I'll send, I'll send a note and see. He, he's a guy that, I mean, he left, uh, he was, he was uh, put in prison for a drug uh, conviction when he was a little older, but uh, his, his mission is to help people just like yours to, to help young people, uh, well, particularly to recognize how they can be successful. And part of that is by meeting people who've been successful. So I'm sure he'd like to, you know, add you to his list of people that they can meet. So. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, again, like I said, I, I would love to speak more and dialogue more with people in uh, any NAACP. I'm going to definitely become a member for sure. Uh, um, 
And I just want to thank you all for having me as well. And if anybody knows any schools or anything that needs a speaker as well, please don't hesitate. I'll be here ready to advocate. So thank you again. And um, I would like to say, Mr. Xavier, yes, sir. the church is called Bethel Baptist Church on 2nd Avenue in Decatur. Okay. I'm pastor there. We have this group called the Repairers of the Breach. And okay. it's uh, dealing with young men. Do you understand the, uh, a bridge is breached when it's broken? Mm -hmm. And so what we try to do is get one end, which is the youth, and the other end, which is the adults, and pull them together. So we work as repairers to get them to be able to cross the bridge into successful adulthood. We meet about three times a year, but it's normally a pretty big event. We just had one that was in April at the end, but I'm going to put you with the chairperson. If you can put your information in the chat, I'll put you with the chairperson and that person will contact you. I'll let him know uh, what you do and the fact, the fact that you're a motivational speaker and we'll try our best to get you in for the next one that we have. Yes, sir. I would love that. I will make sure to make time for that. I think the next one will be in August, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll let you know of the dates, or he'll let you know of the dates, and we would love to have you there. The last time we had it uh, in April, there was a big cookout there, had some guys speaking. There was one guy, well, there was a bunch of guys, they come around with uh, those uh, Polaris slingshots, you know, it's the the two wheels in the front look like the Batman mobile. Oh. <laughs> had, about, had about 20 of them guys come. They were suited up, but they did get a chance to speak and the okay. youth loved it. You know, eating hot dogs, hamburgers, but we're socializing and the church people come and we try to make sure that, that works. So we'll get you in to speak with us on the next time that we have it. All right. Yes, sir. I would love that. I'd be honored. Thank you so awesome. much. Sir. So I'll get your information and we'll go from there as far as what we need to do. Yes, sir. Sounds good. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Xavier at this time? Yes, Nadine. Yes, go ahead, Nadine. I couldn't wait. I <laughs> love the fact that you're from DeKalb County and uh, all of what you're doing. You you keep mentioning back then. Back then, you look like you just got out of you know college. So um, I just wanted to ask, how long have you been doing what you're doing you may have stated it earlier I just want to to really commend you on what you're doing and I mean if I may ask if you don't mind you know able to put his info because I, I do have some organizations that you know I can recommend you to uh, speaking with namely our own NAACP but other organizations as well. And just like they say, homegrown from DeKalb County, what, how, what better than you can get than a person who's lived? I remember the time when um, it was mentioned in terrible gains, not only just gains out of our own county, but gains that was in DeKalb County that was far from, you know, uh by way of China, you know. So and they probably are still around. It's just uh I commend the police area at the time that was like 15, 10 years ago, um, you know, making sure that that didn't take over the county. So and when you mention about, you know, didn't have the help, I feel you because like you're saying the resources you wanting to do and didn't know where to go. And I myself used to uh, help volunteer with those youth diversion programs through the um, juvenile, the CAP juvenile services where, you know, it was like whatever they did in school, if they own up to what they're doing and go through the process of what we've given them, they would not have to go to court or go into the juvenile. So that was sort of like a diversion. And, but if they didn't finish what they were supposed to do, they had to go before the judge. And I've you know, also uh, helped within the women prison right over there off Boulder Crest before that was back in younger days. So it is important, you know, continuing to be, be um, just consistent, appreciate 
you wanting to do and see a path. Uh, didn't hear whether you um, have it as a uh, nonprofit or organization right now, but we'd definitely love for you to, you know, stay connected. So that we have a youth uh, council. Our president, Lance Hammonds, is on the line with us right now. But I just couldn't wait to say thank you for what you're doing, making a difference. You know, hey, just like Pac, you know, Pastor Speakman mentioned, it takes us old folks like me. I'm not saying y'all, y'all young. <laughs> but to, you know, want to give back what we know, you know, and I, I just want to state that. And thank you. All right. All right. Thanks so much for that, everyone. Um, Mr. Xavier, we'll be in contact with you. If there's any closing remarks you'd like to have, please let us know before we move on into the rest of the agenda. Um, I'm sorry about that. My thing went out. But uh, again, I just want to thank you all for all you do for our community, more importantly. Uh, you know, nobody's getting paid for this. And it takes, you know, discipline and diligence to come in, you know, every month, sometimes every night and make a difference. So uh, thank you for having me. Secondly, more importantly, um, and I, I look forward to working with you all and um, ready to make a difference. <laughs>